Hello and welcome, I'm Necro and today we'll be reviewing What Boy's Early Access Strategic Card Game, Trials of Fire. Now for those of you who've been keeping up to date with the EGX videos, a little while back I was lucky enough to get to interview Dax from What Boy, and we've been given access to the game in its current build. Now I do want to point out, this review is for the game's current Early Access version, which is version 0.07. So the game is likely to change as time goes on, but this should give you a feel for the game at its base roots. Now, first up on the review is the story. Now, the story for Trials of Fire is an interesting take on the classic post-apocalypse survival, but it places it in a fantasy setting as a nice change of pace from the traditional sci-fi post-apocalypse or fantasy pre-slash-ongoing apocalypse situation. You start off with a band of adventurers going out in search of things needed to survive the post-cataclysm world of Ashi. The cataclysm refers to a magical event that ruined the world, decimating many populations, leaving the ratlings as the new dominant species, elves hated and reviled for their assumed role in causing the cataclysm, and humans sc scattered and restricted to small communities. In-game, the story is touched upon rather lightly. It's treated more as something to point you in the right direction, with some gentle prods, rather than some overarching narrative that forces you on the rails from point A to point B. This does help to create a classic pen and paper feel to the game, which does lend itself very well to the game's art style, but it is worth pointing out that though the story is a light touch, it's certainly not lacking in depth. Every encounter has a small narrative assigned to it, and the game is brilliant at contextualising everything, so it does this through the use of these small tabs in narrative sections, well, they'll cover anything that seems important, so that could be a type of people, or a community, or a location, or just even an event, or just like a tiny bit of lore. But it is really good, because that way you don't have to have like some overly contextualised thing, it's just a case of, if you want to look, you can, if you don't, you can go straight on. And, you know, thanks to features like these, you know, if you're a big fan of story, then, you know, you'll be able to get yourself immersed really well. And at the same time, if you prefer to get into the action as much as possible, you can just, you know, go straight for it. You'll get the information you need, you don't need every single piece. And again, it is also really nice that, you know, they put it where it's relevant. So, for instance, if you have a narrative section explain the cataclysm occurred in this location, it then has a little tab that says this is what the cataclysm is, rather than having to go back to some codex and, you know, ruin the immersion by having to exit the game and go back to the main menu. Next up is the art style. Now, following on from the pen and paper style that the story brings to the table, the game's art style really brings that to a head. The entire gameplay takes place in a book, with the edges of the map actually being the end of the page, and the combat maps actually being formed by, ex by like, kind of expanding up from the base of the paper to then create the 3D environment that you're fighting. And alongside this, the art style does a very impressive job of making the barren world feel very lived in. So it's really situated in a beautiful aesthetic, and honestly, it does provide a brilliant, well-fitted, naturally treacherous and jagged feel to the world around you. Now, on to gameplay. Now, the game's combat system is both complex and simple. The basic controls are very intuitive and very easy to get the hang of. There is the occasional blip where the controls aren't responsive, but given how early we are in the early access period for this game, you can't really hold it against it. But other than that, the control scheme is simple and based entirely from just using the mouse. The option to add key bindings or shortcuts would be a good feature, but to be fair, that would just be about greater convenience than fulfilling any desperate need, given that the mouse can cover pretty much any gameplay needs. And given that, you know, it's turn-based, it's not a case of, oh wow, I need to hit this right away, that those seconds are lifesavers. Once we get past the control system, then we start to see the game bring up its more complex dynamics. At its core, the game's combat has a simple premise. You draw your cards, you recycle where you need to so that you can move, attack, or provide buffs where relevant for your characters, and then you end your turn and your opponent will do the same. However, then we start to see some of the additional elements brought out. So some buffs are conditional on the follow-up actions, some cards will provide a bonus in the following turn, and some will only work until you take a certain amount of damage. Now, unfortunately, in relation to this, the tutorial does leave a bit to be desired. It does cover the basics of combat, but other than that, you're thrown into the deep end a bit. This is even more significant with the campaign. You do get tips as you go, but chances are you're going to learn best from trial and error. But, so with this in mind, you know, don't expect your first campaign to go off without a hitch. As you travel, you'll have to juggle health, food, and fatigue, with the various encounters present offering as much of a chance to satisfy one of these needs as to wind up harming you. Now, following this is how your adventures are customizable. Customization is one of the more distinct elements to Trials of Fire. While not a huge feature, the ability to name your characters and have that reflected in the story does make your playthroughs feel a lot more personal. 
Customization expresses itself even more with the actual gameplay. Combat wise, you're able to swap out your cards in your deck or change your armor and that'll give you access to different cards. And this also ties into a feeling of progression where as time goes on, you are gonna likely abandon your initial gear and cards and start to you know, have to make choices on your own specific playstyle. Now, thankfully in regards to this, the game does actually offer better cards that aren't just gonna be at some huge cost. So it's not a case of you're always gonna have to, have to use some rubbish card just for the sake of having it. A lot of the cards are brought out that are better and at the same time take as much effort to use as the initial cards, which I think is a really good system for the progression. Now, while it is difficult to comment on the uniqueness of the different characters, given that we do only currently have the necessary free to fill the adventure party, the various times where a character is able to provide a unique solution to the various encounters the game is immersed in, alongside the fact that we have five upcoming characters confirmed to be added in game, it does give us an optimistic foothold for what future dynamics we can look forward to. Now, possibly the most important element to be discussed about this game in its current format is consequence. Consequence is saturated into nearly every facet of this game. The story revolves around trying to survive the post-cataclysm world, a consequence of the prior generations, particularly the elves allegedly. Your loadouts will become more defined by personal choice as you move forward, and your chance of survival will almost be entirely be a consequence of your decisions. Do you rest where you are, ensuring you can avoid fatigue, or do you push on despite the risks to save your food supplies? Either way, your choice can easily haunt you. In Trials of Fire, your mistakes and failures can easily wind up defining your journey as much as your successes. Enter battle with fatigue, and you can draw a useless card. End up gravely injured, and you can have a damaging card stuck in your deck for a very long time. That isn't to say that every unpredicted consequence is going to be a negative one. There are plenty of rewards if you can push past certain risks. Good armor, a follower to assist the group, or even a stockpile of much needed supplies are just as likely as any bad thing with the encounters. It's just a matter of risk management. But overall, I would say Trials of Fire at its current stage really successfully embodies the mentality of less is more at its core. The world is barren, but simultaneously filled with encounters. Combat is simple, but very nuanced, which can easily turn from hot to cold in a few turns. The enemy types aren't known much beyond their motivations, and yet they'll still start to feel unique and recognisable after only a few playthroughs, given the use of cards they have and such. Now, I am curious if they will decide to implement a feature allowing multiple saves for separate campaigns. But I think given that we do only currently have the first campaign, it makes sense why we don't see that yet. Also, going forward, I do hope we get some solid diversity with the remaining characters that are going to be added to our rosters, alongside some exciting new quests. And I do think one idea that would be really interesting, I'm not sure if they'll go for this, but <laughs> you never know, I might have an in, <laughs> would be like a survival game mode where players just try to keep the party alive for as many days as possible. So similar to the campaign, but just no end point side. Just see how far you can go and how long you can last. Now, I mean, you could even work in a leaderboard feature of that as a way of working in some like multiplayer element to the game. I mean, because the game already does provide a record of player stats, which is good. But aside from that, there's little opportunity for interaction or community at its current stage. So, but with all this in mind, I'm giving the game a 9 out of 10. The only reason this game isn't getting a 10 is due to me thinking that there is certainly more that, you know, could be put in. But I think it is safe to say that Wattboy have a strong chance of filling that void, given that this is just the beginning. The game's definitely off to a solid start, with a strong core formula, and I'm greatly looking forward to see where it goes from here. So if you're a fan of card games, roguelike RPGs, or even survival games, you're not going to struggle to find something you enjoy. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Uh, keep an eye out on the channel, because I am going to be putting some more videos up for Trials of Fire. And thanks for watching, have a great day.